immunisation and infectious diseases. Well, even before immunisation was first thought of, there was generally some basic understanding of how it operated. For instance, when wealthy households were looking for new staff, they selected workers not for unblemished skins, but those who had pockmarked faces and hands. They'd figured out that those who already had a pox wouldn't catch it again and bring it into the household to infect everybody else. However, in order to understand about how immunisation and how a disease actually spreads, you need to look at what's known as the transmission rate or infection rate of a particular disease. When a person catches a disease, they're likely to infect a number of other people before they're no longer infected and contagious themselves. Now, this number would depend upon how many people that are vulnerable to the disease the infected person comes into contact with. For example, those people have already been immunised, or have a natural immunity or resistance to the disease, or have already had the disease, or have minimal exposure to, to it, are unlikely to actually catch the disease. Anybody else is likely to contract it. Now, if this number of people that catch the disease is greater than one, the disease will spread. If that number is less than one, the disease will dwindle and eventually die out. The larger or smaller the number, the greater this actually effect actually happen. For example, if uh, each infected person infects two other people, and each of those two people goes on to infect another two people, and so on, and so on, and so on. You can quickly see how a disease grows and becomes an epidemic. When you have a high proportion of the community at large, though, that's immunised to a particular disease, say over 90%, it becomes very difficult for the disease to spread, since nearly everyone that the disease comes into contact with is resistant to it. Sometimes it's what's known as the herd immunity. Now, once the practice of immunising large proportion of the populations against, say, smallpox and other diseases took hold, cases of the disease uh, that people were immunised against fell rapidly. Now, where immunisation didn't take place, people are still vulnerable to the disease and the disease rates are still quite high. For example, you can see that very clearly in polio. Now, does this mean that all immunisation is totally safe. No. It comes down to calculating risk. All immunisation carries risks of some side effects. However, these side effects are generally minor when compared to the actual disease itself. Uh, for instance, the chance of getting a headache or a rash as a side effect compared to the chance of being permanently disabled or dead seems a fairly easy trade-off. But it then comes down to how likely the side effects are compared to how likely you are to catch the disease. And this is far more difficult to actually calculate and does vary significantly from disease to disease. However, the general rule, unless the rest of the population has an immunity rate over 98% in an area which is actually vulnerable to the disease, you're better off being vaccinated than not. However, it's actually very rare for the general population to be vaccinated at this high rate probably mainly due to some scares about being vaccinated. Most common of these is the one linking MMR to autism, which was down to one dis uh, scientist distorting the reports in return for a financial gain, and have persisted due to some parents reporting, say, anecdotal evidence like that their child uh, was given an uh, injection and a few weeks later uh, developed autism. The problem with this is just because two um, events happen close to each other doesn't necessarily mean they're actually related or linked. Another parent could say that their child started teething a few weeks after being injected. Does that mean immunisation causes teething? No. It just happens that these things naturally occur at the same time. So, in summary, you should probably get immunised for every disease in a country you're travelling to or living in that this actually happens in that particular country. And if you work in certain vulnerable areas like healthcare or transport, you may want to take additional precautions against some other diseases. Because you might like to come in direct contact with a new carrier for those diseases. And whilst immunisation isn't totally safe, it's safer than 
getting the disease itself.